I'm gonna show you guys how to capture really good N64 footage to your computer, just like I did in my N64 car games video. You're gonna need a GV USB 2 from Amazon, which has S-Video, it's a really great capture device. You're going to need an S-Video AV cable for your N64 and a couple AV cable splitters. Streamlabs on your laptop, and you can also play it off a TV. Before we do anything else, we're gonna compare what the footage looks like from the GV USB 2 through the S video, through the video, and then compare it to this HDMI converter, which can do 720 and 1080. It's me, Mario. 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 Links for everything is in the description below. So first thing we're gonna need to do, make sure we're hooked up to power and then plug in our Nintendo cable that also has S-Video and AV. The best part about this GV USB 2 is we can use S video, which bumps up the quality a little bit compared to just using the video port. Then we hook up our audio and we just plug it into our USB on our computer after downloading the software using a registration code and everything, which is a little bit weird, but there's a couple of channels out there that'll show you a good guide to that. I'll link them in the description below because this is kind of where I got the information from anyways. Plug this in and turn it on. You'll see it show up in your Streamlabs. And then we can click on our video capture device, deactivate and reactivate, and it should start right up. There we go, oops. And the settings I'm using, I started a new scene and my settings here are 640 by 480, 640 by 480. We got this sharpening, common FPS, FPS 30. Audio is set to this, and I don't have anything set up for stream or anything. Then I click source, add video capture device, add source, add a new source instead call it whatever you want. And from there, I picked the GV USB 2. Which might not work because it's already being used. And here are my settings for that. If I click here, we are at 640 by 480, FPS 30, video format 80, any color space default, color range default, buffering auto detect, and audio going to uh, desktop audio direct sound. We can adjust that right here so we're not clipping. And then I downloaded this scan line thing to put over it as well so that it looks a little more old gamey. If you right click and go to your deinterlacing, I disabled it. I did my deinterlacing through the video capture device. If you go to configure video, we got this nice screen that pops up. And my settings are S-Video, because I'm using S-Video. High motion deinterlacing, because when I put it to one of the other deinterlacers, I noticed that it uh, kind of bounced around a little bit, so I didn't like that at all. Scale type stretch, mirror none. And then, uh, let's see, NTSC underscore M underscore J and I think the brightness contrast is pretty standard. I don't know if I messed with it or that's the way it came. And I think driver property, yeah, I didn't touch anything there. And let's go back to our settings for our video recording. Uh, standard, I got my user path, MP4, Software 264, CBR 10,000, very fast. So you can copy that and it comes out looking pretty good. And when it's time to record, let's press the record button. 
reset it. And there's our menu. And it is a little bit, a little bit of input lag when you're controlling it here and going to that screen. So I've got a solution for that. So to get it to work on my TV, I look at all my cables coming out of the N64, right? We got this yellow video. And what I do is I grab an extension or in my case, one of my splitters that takes one and turn it into two. I'll plug this one into this unused video and run that right to the video right here. So if I turn it on, you'll see I got video going to both. And you'll notice the slight bit of delay going to the computer, which isn't even that bad. Then I'll unplug my audio because I want to be able to hear audio on this one as well, so it's not laggy. Grab another splitter. Let's go from, uh, I guess, white. Plug that into the TV. And then plug the other part into the white receiver. And since this only has one import for audio on the TV, I'll take my red and plug it right back in. So I'm getting full audio to that and enough audio to play off here. There, stopped recording. Let me start recording again. So you can see that one's just a little quicker and that's what you want in racing games. You can't really deal with all that lag if you're doing something that's fast paced. And it's super easy to play and the footage looks good. As good as can be for an N64 without getting like a retro tink, I think. I haven't tried one of those yet. But I'm super happy with it. It makes playing and streaming easy with no input lag. And the capture quality is as good as I could expect. So uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Should I try a retro tink or What's the other thing? Open source uh, video capture things. That's a line doubler. But um, I think you need S card cables and modified N64s, which is a lot of work, and I don't really want that. And I'm, I'm very happy with this the way it is. And that's about it. I guess another thing I would add is if you right click on this, go to your transform, go to edit transform. Our size is the same as our input size, which means we are 100% pixel for pixel. So you gotta remember when you're in your uh, Premiere editing it, if you wanna make it twice the size, just double it, and then you're not gonna have like half pixels. Thanks for watching guys, I hope this helped set up your N64 stream. Next I'm gonna figure out how to stream the PS2, PS1, all that other stuff, and I'll keep you guys posted.